That sounded way worse than I meant it. Or is that just in my head? No, it was it was bad. Tonight on the Ritual Misery podcast, I got stoned. I'm going to tell you about it. Uh, the fiscal year is ending, and that always sucks. Yeah. Anno 1800, um, I've been playing it. Uh, we're going to talk about some dead things. Dead things. And we have Jenny. Yay, Yay. Jenny. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 228 for Thursday, the 19th of September, 2019. This is the show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, but we're not important because tonight we have Jenny Josephson on the show with us tonight. Hey Jenny, how you been? I'm si- I don't know why I'm silently cheering. I- I'm like <laughs> entranced with watching myself 10 seconds later on <laughs> the Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Beam, thank you for the subscription, and thank you for coming out. We have it's been a while since we've had uh, had you in the show for a while, so uh, we really appreciate you coming back. It's my pleasure. Uh, this show is the most fun now that I don't have. Let's talk about Thrones. Well, that that has unfortunately come to an end for now. Um, Are you guys going to bring it back when the um, when the new show comes out? So the official story on that is that we are waiting to see how hyped up we are about the new show when the new show begins to launch. Yeah. That's essentially what it comes out to. Yep. Got because if sense. it's just like blonde people bonking on dragons, I don't know. Like it's right. been done. But if it really has a compelling story to tell, maybe. Or maybe we'll do it like once a month or something. Yeah. Or, I mean, even if a new book comes out, which... We'll probably all be into new new media by then. Yeah. Um, so I have a confession to make. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Yesterday morning, after I got my chores done and got all the kids off to school and everything else, I sat down and smoked about half a joint. Oh. Yeah. It uh, it was Alaska Greenworks Galactic Jack. It was a pre-roll that I purchased last week. And uh, once my wife told me I should not be waiting for her to enjoy the high with me because she couldn't enjoy it with me, so she'd just sit there watching and she would be bored, I went ahead and did it uh, by myself. And I can tell you that half a joint was about a quarter joint too much. Mm -hmm. Because I was blitzed. Um, I took about a three-hour semi-nap and then got up and enjoyed the rest of my day. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Uh, welcome was it, to retirement. <laughs> would you describe it as peaceful or would you describe it as terrifying or would you just describe it as like, I just went to bed? Um, so I did have a little bit of the, uh, the, the, the panic set in only in that I was, I smoked it. So there's the trail of smoke on my clothes and stuff like that. So I immediately went upstairs, got a shower, went downstairs, took all my clothes that I was wearing, threw them in the wash with some other stuff so that there was like minimal trace available. Um, and, and it's not because like, I'm afraid of being caught cause it's legal here. It's a matter yeah. of if my wife smells it, she'd be pissed off just because it was being smoked. She doesn't like, like the smell of smoke repulses her. So, mm. yeah. um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I thought I knew ADD until I was laying on the couch with nothing but my brain going at about a uh. million miles an hour. Uh, so much so that my watch actually went off and said, Hey, you've got an abnormally high heart rate right now. (laughs) You know, I, I'm really curious what it would be like for me to smoke now, because the only time I ever smoked marijuana in my life, I was in high school. Cannabis, Kent. And the, oh, sure. Cannabis. Sure. We we don't use the racially charged term marijuana on the show liberally. (laughs) Got it. All right. Uh, so anyway, the last time I had that substance, I was in high school, and the prevalent emotion that I experienced was paranoia. I was scared shitless <laughs> the whole time. And you couldn't play D&D. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm just curious. Like, now that it's, you know, it's legal, it's prevalent, it's whatever. I mean, I can't because I'm a federal employee. Right. It's still uh, not allowed for me. But if let's say I wasn't. What would that would would I still be paranoid? And if so, what are, what would I be paranoid about? Right, <laughs> right. I think it's about brain chemistry heightened by like how comfortable you feel doing it. So like 
I have friends for whom the weed, is that what we're calling it? The cool kids are calling it the weed. Uh, it makes them very productive and very like, oh, great. I'm going to focus in. I'm going to do what I got to do and I'm going to get going. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's like, I'm seeing color bars and I hate myself. <laughs> and it's so I don't do it. Like, and there, look, I live in California. It's not only legal. It's like prevalent. You can get every different version of THC, U UFH, VHS. <laughs> like there's every version of marijuana available to me and I just don't have the time like I don't go into wine either for this reason I'm just like give me a chocolate bar we'll do the <laughs> same thing <laughs> and it's just like too my brain does not want to be unleashed yeah so like be, yeah. before this I had I had, had I've got some edibles in my fridge that I'd I'd partaken in and those really just kind of made me tired like but uh, so you've got the sativa and you've got the Indica and apparently the indica is more of the laid back and the sativa is more of the let's go get some shit done. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's my experience with it thus far because the, the edibles were indica and they just basically put me to sleep, gave me the best night's sleep I've had in decades. And um, the the sativa was not the same. Um, so uh, I, I, I think next time, because there will be a next time, next time. Uh, I'll, I'll have a, a, a lighter dose and, uh, I'll take it. I'll, I'll have my zoom ready to record oh, God. for yeah. jury, uh, for jury or for this show or just for whatever. <laughs> um, so wait, but in all seriousness with the VHS, we know about, um, CBD, right? Mm -hmm. And how if you do a one to one ratio of CBD to whatever the fur, then you end up with like a different version, like maybe less paranoid, maybe just more relaxing, mm -hmm. whatever, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm the least qualified person to talk about this. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and that's honestly, that's one of the main reasons I, I was even diving back into it is because I do have chronic pain. So, uh, yeah. And I can tell you that once I got up and got moving around, I was completely pain free for the rest of the day. And this is after going to the dump and moving a lot of shit that morning. My back was killing me beforehand. So, uh, mm. promising there, I just need to find that right balance where I'm not comatose for three hours. Yeah. Uh, trapped in my own head with the body that just doesn't want to fucking move. Uh, Famous last words. These goldfish don't seem to be working. <laughs> and that was actually the problem. Cause I, I, I got about three good hits off that joint and the first one was like, oh, this just tastes like tobacco. What what the hell? And the second one was like, all right, I might, I don't know if that's, I don't know if I'm getting tingly in the brain for, you know, having the, the smoke or if it's the actual pot. And the third one sealed yeah. it. And I was like, okay, I got to stuff this out while I'm still conscious enough to do it. So. <laughs> well, all right. I'll save my, I'll save my further thoughts because we have so many things to talk about, but I have, uh. I do. I don't smoke cigarettes, but I will say there is something very appealing about like you know, maybe sitting in the bathtub and smoking on a hurry. Uh, <laughs> just like you feel very cool. And that's my only experience with smoking because I just won't smoke cigarettes or anything else. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I will say that's how you can overindulge just being like. This seems aesthetically great. And then all of a sudden you're just like, I'm, I'm flying. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, Nadia in the chat says, "If you do it before RMP, you can write it off on taxes." <laughs> this is uh, I will. Uh, I'm not denying that. Uh, <laughs> I feel like the federal government will like so complain. Well, about so that. here's the thing, and I've just learned this in John Oliver. Like even pot industries, they have to do everything in cash because banks are federally insured, and that insurance can't extend to um, anything that's still a federal crime, which marijuana or uh, cannabis smoking is. Um, so they have to deal everything in cash. So every 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 uh, uh, store around here, every dispensary has an ATM in the store, mm -hmm. and then you add to that that they still have to claim their taxes, claim their income on taxes, but they can't say where the income comes from. Like it's it's just the yeah, it's, it's the just mess. junk. That's so. not going to catch up with anybody. I know. That's I mean that's how they got Al Capone. So <laughs> yeah, uh, Kent. Speaking of going out of your fucking gourd into the fiscal year. I know this is fun. Uh, dude, so I'm, I'm trying to take a, a work-related uh, trip for some training mm -hmm. uh, just a couple of weeks, and it's, it's right about a week. The class starts about a week after 
October 1st, which is anybody that's ever worked for the federal government knows that's the the time of year that the fiscal year changes. And September is basically a no spend zone. And I got to pay for this damn class. Yet I can't have access to the money until the first of October. And, but I have to have my travel plans all like paid for before the first of October. It's it sucks. I won't know until about three days prior uh, to the class if I'm actually going to be able to attend. Right. Mm. That's what I've been um, uh, upset about <laughs> lately. Yeah. That's September is the no spend month until the last day of September. Then it's spend everything day. Yeah, basically. It's stupid. Yep. yep. Yeah. Oh, the military. Uh, you... They're just like us. <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, um, we suddenly have $10,000 that needs to be spent. Um, spend it. Uh, but we don't need anything. I don't care. Spend it anyway. Yeah. In Hawaii, oh we were the, one of the last places before the dateline. So all the money would flow over to us as people couldn't spend it. And we would be busy until right, at, right up to midnight spending thousands of dollars and stuff. I'm so, so thrilled, you guys. I'm just so thrilled with my tax dollars are are going to this purpose. I mean, if it makes what you feel... What would you any, buy? Uh, chairs, office equipment, computers, paper, office supplies. Uh, yep. You couldn't buy anything, any capital assets, so no buildings or land or anything like that. Nothing major, no vehicles. Uh, but it's all... Yeah, it's all... You wait until that day before you buy, like, next year's paper and pens. And, Got it. I mean, to, to right. be fair, there people have been vetting those lists for months on end and it's like commander prioritized. So yeah, in theory, nobody's the money buying is, like beer. No, no right. correct. Yeah. That's no. that is not an authorized purchase. You, you may be purchasing 14 pallets of paper and you're only going to use two, but it'll yeah. still but be here. You also might get a comfortable chair. And I think that's important. Genuinely. Right. That is about the time when all the furniture and all the chairs and stuff like that get renewed. Hey, we got new keyboards for everybody. We're not going to get new computers. No, we couldn't buy those with that money, but we got new <laughs> keyboards. <laughs> That's cool. So, um, movie pass, Kent, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta ask you about movie pass. Dude, it's dead. Finally, finally it is dead. I was holding on to this, my <laughs> movie pass card in my wallet without having used it in probably a year and a half. When I signed up for this thing, it was super cheap and super awesome. Mm -hmm. I 60 bucks or something like that for a one-year subscription, and I could go see a movie every single day, and it didn't matter what movie I saw. I got my money's worth out of this thing. Uh, but right after that, they started having massive money problems. <laughs> I wonder why. And it's gone downhill ever since. And uh, finally, it's dead. So I'm going to symbolically... <sighs> mourn them as I cut up my movie pass card. Wow. He actually showed preparation for this show by having scissors <laughs> available. Don't cut yourself on the air, dude. Yeah. Rest in peace, <laughs> movie pass. It was a good idea, movie pass. <laughs> it really was. Yeah. It it didn't pan out, but not all good no, ideas do. The economics didn't work, but it was a good idea. Um, um now, <clears throat> Jenny, was MoviePass a way for you to experience creativity, or do you have other outlets for that? No, I have other outlets for that. Well, so, what are those? Uh, well, I will say that there weren't a lot of outlets for that for a while. I've been running, we're going to talk about this in a little bit, I've been running my own company um, for a while with a lot of help from <clears throat> someone here. And uh, uh, I just was feeling very drained at the end of summer. And as you know from people who've lived in L in uh, Los Angeles or Southern California, summer never ends here, mm -mm. which many people think is a good thing, and I don't. Uh, and I, because I can't like enjoy it, like it works, but it's still hot, and you have to like hide in the air conditioning. It just sucks. So I was just feeling like, oh, I'm just in such a grind, and I just like. I'm like a little poor and I'm staying put. And then I just woke up this morning and I was like, I can solve this problem. And so uh, I published uh, 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 some stuff and I had some really like good ideas. And it was like I just woke up and I was like, oh, that's right. You have to be creative for yourself like just a little bit a day or else you just lose your GD mind, even if you're working on stuff for work that you really like, which mm. – I really like, you know, and, uh, I just, I don't know. It was like a real 
breakthrough and I was like, okay, I'm just going to devote the time to this and I'll feel better about everything else. So that we'll talk more about that. But it was just like I published things. I did th- like I just was like, no, for me, I'm going to do this for me. And it was great. That's awesome. Yeah. Kent, what do you do for your creativity? Uh, Ritual Misery podcast. <laughs> where, where did your creativity come out? <clears throat> um, I don't know. We're waiting on that moment, I guess. <laughs> Still fanning the flames. Um, yeah. The, and and you're, you're right, Jenny. If you don't do something creative for yourself, you don't have an outlet like that, then you can get bogged down in other people's art, especially when you're in a production industry. You're doing all the things other people need, but you're not taking care of yourself. So. Yep. That is one reason Ritual Misery has not yet died. Creative self-care. Yeah. Although we're getting, we're getting close to a quarter of the way, though, Kent. I mean, I, I, I'm calling it now. We got a max of 1,000 episodes, and we're almost at 250. So, Okay. Only, yeah. only 23 That's... more years of this shit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's do it. Um, hey, man, I've been playing Anno 1800, and I've talked about this game before, but it, uh, you play you know, Ubisoft Store this month. It was free. So I signed up for their little Uplay experience because it was free mm-hmm. and been playing Anno 1800. So this makes the second time I've been able to play this game and I have yet to pay for it because that's how awesome I am at life. And it's a 4X game, you know, explore, uh, expand, uh, extinguish, whatever. You build a, a port town and you can build other port towns and you have to build up. And, and it's just got a very unique uh, uh, mechanic to it. Having your primary resource is your people, and it divides the people into workers or farmers or artisans, and it's really fun. If you haven't played it yet, I recommend you go out and try it, and let me know how you're going to feel on October first when the free trial is over. Hmm. Are you are you going to buy it? No. Okay. <laughs> I, Spoilers. Once once it goes off the free side, it goes back into my ah. Oh, I'll save that for when it's seventy five percent off and it's only ten dollars, because that's how I buy all my games. I don't spend more than ten bucks on anything. Right. Yep. That's that's me too. I wait for Steam sales. Yeah. And they had a midweek sale this week, and I got a uh, uh, Europa Universalis four for like seven ninety five or something like that. Easy mm. for you to. It's not. Um, <laughs> we uh, we finally cracked Red Dead Redemption two. Ooh. And I've been playing when I whenever I get like overwhelmed, this was the precedent to the creativity breakthrough. I play Skyrim for a while and I go check on my Skyrim houses and I just think like, why do I have three houses in Skyrim and none in the real world? (laughs) (laughs) And uh, when I do that, uh, then I'm very happy. And then, I, you know, I then I have a creative breakthrough because I've checked on my uh, hot uh military wife and i've um checked on all my children and i've farmed some wheat all fake and i've probably killed some people in the game and then i feel better maybe a dragon or two yeah there they just show up they're like pesty (laughs) ken have you ever played skyrim uh very briefly i i maybe an hour's worth total so yeah very briefly you're just scratching the surface. How about Elder Scrolls in general? How how versed are you in the series? Yeah. Um, what was probably two versions before? Oblivion? Skyrim. Mm, it wasn't that one. Hmm. Well, anyway, one of the older ones, I've got many hours in that one. Okay. Probably, I don't know, 100 or so hours. I don't know. Um, I got pretty into to one of them many, many, many years ago. Probably like 15 years ago or something. Um yeah, I just I don't dedicate that much time to games anymore, so it doesn't make sense for me to get involved in something that I'm not going to actually like devote some time to. Which is why uh, Ubisoft's free play for the month would have been great for you. Yeah, but then I would have uh, I would know that I've got a time limit, and I would be trying to play it at every moment, and I wouldn't get anything else done, and it would, it would not be good for me. And now you know why Rich Misery isn't caught up. <laughs> <laughs> all right um jenny what else have you been occupying your time with because you got another note in here and i want to hear yep. about it because it's something i yep. haven't been into okay so 10 years too late uh matt and i have finally cracked justified the tv show that was on fx i believe and um you know it's r- <laughs> really damn good uh and it's not good in like a 
there are moments when it ascends to the quality of like the wire or um I'm trying to think of a different like deadwood or something like that and then there are moments when it's like a little procedural and then there are moments when it's just like really fun and it is one of those shows that's not perfect but it is absolutely one of the best written shows on TV the dialogue is incredible the character is incredible. The world that they're building starts like very contained and then just like, like spirals out. And, and it's all about Harlan County, Kentucky and Lexington, Kentucky and coal miners and U S marshals. And I feel like you guys would get a lot out of it. Um, hmm. and it's because it's like about like dumb procedural stuff and people bending the rules, but people also following the rules and, a long history of the marshal service. And then they have all this great stuff, which is like, basically there's like this one mountain in Harlan County and everybody lives in a holler. That's which where is, my family is from. My mom's yeah. family is from Harlan County. It's, and they you always would love it holler. or hate it. I don't know. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but, uh, it's, but so like the thing that I've locked on, the nerdy thing that I've locked onto and justified aside from just the great acting and the great characters and, um, this Boyd Crowder character who's like, he talks so soft. I'm Boyd Crowder, and uh, I'm just going to tell you something real soft, and then I'm going to kill you. But uh, he the, – the the thing I've latched onto is the food. So, like, Justified is one of those shows that uh, talks about food at great length, and I love them for it. That I've learned about apple pie, which is like moonshine apple, mm. and uh, 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 shoe fly pie – and obviously there was like basically a whole season that revolved around ribs. Uh, so good. Uh, so I think you would get, you guys would really like it. And it, it led us to me driving around in the car the other day was Matt was like, Oh, I want Dunkin' Donuts. And we went to go get Dunkin' Donuts. And, uh, I came up with this idea. I was like, I wish there was a place with like, they do all these pop-ups in LA. That's like saved by the bell or the peach pit where they have like different, like cool places that are from TV. I was like, what if you just had one location and it was just a revolving series, like a good restaurant, not like the hard rock cafe. And you did all the food from like the Sopranos for six months. And then you did justified for six months and you brought in all the old props and you maybe have like appearances from showrunners for like dinners. And then there's like a big banquet hall up in the top and you call the place TV dinner. Oh, that's, uh -huh. that's, that's actually pretty that's good. good. That's uh -huh. good. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. So, uh, <laughs> I like, by the way, I like that I, um, said the words red dead redemption and Jackie Hearn just showed up. <laughs> <laughs> so great. <laughs> that's, that's, um, and, that's how it works. Um, but I did, uh, we did play red dead redemption too. Now that she showed up, I really do have to, um, uh, say that, uh, we just started it. So I'm really just learning how to shoot deer and go for long conversational rides. Uh, but we will get there. <laughs> we'll, we'll get, I loved red dead redemption, but red dead redemption too. I have to like relearn all the skills and everybody's very like in HD and it's just like, okay, I gotta, I gotta really have the time for this. So yeah, I'm loving it, but like, uh, I don't have enough time to play that game. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, I never played the first one because, well, I've never finished any of the other similar games like, uh, like, like Skyrim, Grand Theft Auto. Gra yeah, Skyrim, Grand Theft Auto, any of those very long story based games with a lot of action, and then you go through the story. I've just I've never finished any of them. So, if two uh, discs, it's two discs in today's <laughs> world. Full, there's a day whole data disc. I had to delete every game except Skyrim off of the ps4 before i could uh play this game Jeez. wow that's insane yeah. uh, I'm, I'm definitely gonna check out justified there's six seasons oh, of it on yeah prime and um yeah that's that's going on my list for sure oh it's on prime I mean, you so may more need to gonna get, get it okay. watch it with a therapist i'm not you're from <laughs> there like. uh, something that i've been watching on uh on netflix is ash versus the evil dead have you guys watched that i have not i have there's not but matt really wants to yeah, if you like anything of Evil Dead or Army of Darkness, uh, this is this was made for you. It is so good. It is true to the character of Ash. It's true to the 
the Evil Dead franchise, and it it pushes boundaries. Like it is, if you think there's fucked up things in Evil Dead, like wait till you watch this show. <laughs> it is, it is wild. I'm watching it with my son Lucas, and we got a couple episodes into season two, and we had to take a break because it was so intense and fucked up. We were like, okay, we got to watch Parks and Rec or something like that just to cleanse. <laughs> 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 but it's, it's pretty you, great. Uh, you need a Parks and Rec chaser. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Another great show that I recommend. So many shows I haven't even seen. Oh, I feel so sad about myself right I now. I really think you should watch the, the first couple episodes, like the first whole season to justify. They're only 13 in a season. And the first uh, one, they're very procedural. So like you just enjoy one and not have to worry about like getting caught up or whatever. And then so just watch the pilot. I think you'll really like it. And then eventually you watch another one. And then all of a sudden you're like, I can't stop watching. <laughs> right. Um, Kent, now would be normally the time we'd cut over to the stream team movie draft minute. But yep. the, the, we don't have one. We don't have one because it's over. It's yeah, it's Bye. pretty much over. Technically, we, it's still going right. for like another two weeks or something. But, but um, yes, yeah, we got second place. Yep. Uh, always a bridesmaid, never a bride. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's that's how it works. I would like to bring in the list of movies for the winter draft, though, as they have just recently been revealed. And also, they revealed the people who are going to be competing in the main. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> and bottom of the list, although top in our hearts, is Miss Jenny Josephson herself. They need a girl. Right. This diversity it is the, yep. uh, they hit yep. the quota. Another white woman. Diversity. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it's because I bitched and bitched and bitched not being on the summer draft because I love it so much. I love the movie draft. I'm terrible at it, but I love it. Mm -hmm. I'm terrible at the technology. And they finally took pity on me and let me back in. We keep trying to get the winner of our draft to be uh, automatically, like, you know, up leveled that's into a, theirs that's but a good idea brian blew me off and uh, i haven't talked to justin about it because oh well i will i will up level that idea <laughs> as part of the uh junior varsity team here uh, i'll represent <laughs> brian i think on two or three occasions brian has said oh wow that's a wonderful idea yes let's do this yeah well no he would say yes that sounds great let's i need to talk to justin <laughs> yeah 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 something like that do, do you have every the, time he's do you have the cricket sound effect ready hit it <laughs> Every time it's come up, he's heard about it for the first time and thinks it's a wonderful idea. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, so we have... Um, give me a, a thumbs up, thumbs down if you think this movie is going to do well in the draft. Not if it's going to do well in the box office. If it's going to do well in the draft. Well, that's the same thing, right? It, no. You mean if it's if it's going to be a good movie or not? No. Or No. Because uh, oftentimes movies do really well in the draft that don't do well at all in the box office. Um, Y'all scratching your heads. Oh, you mean like who's what? What? What movie is going to get bid on the most? Right. Okay, I got it. Uh, but uh, I but okay. independent of its performance in real life. Yes. Okay. Well. I'm going to go out on a fucking limb and say Star Wars. Well, I was going to say Star Wars is. Star Wars is kind of the, the key, right? It's going to hit 100 and it's going to get counted down on percentages. Yeah. I don't... Uh, uh, maybe. I think that time is gone. I don't, oh, I don't no. know the name of the bid 100 anymore. Mm. Or, well, tell Jenny bids 100. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know if I'm going to. Like, my, I have two or to five strategies in place at any given time. But, yeah. like, it, it always depends on where they show up, right? So, like, if Star Wars shows up first it's gonna go bananas right if mm -hmm. it shows up 20 last yeah then you have to win it right yeah, yeah. and that's that's where we ended up last season on our draft with avengers, avengers. it was like yeah. the out of 30 movies it was like the 25th movie or something to come out so it yeah. went for like relatively cheap a pittance yeah. <laughs> yeah um okay so joker maybe it's got a lot of buzz it's probably yeah there's gonna be a lot of bids i think on that the current war never heard of don't it don't know it jexy no nope. nope. adam's family mm, that's gonna go cheap i bet 
Yeah. Gemini man. Mm. Is this more space or is this paranoid? <laughs> no, Gemini. That's the Will Smith movie. Oh, where, right. right. That like will be solid $100 million. Where he has to kill himself. Yeah. $100 yeah, million. Yeah. Or his other self, I should say. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Parasite. Uh, never heard of it. It'll go cheap. It'll Ma- be one of those uh, cheap buys that gets you $40 million. Maleficent, Mistress of Evil. People will want that one. That would be a classic Scott Johnson pick. I th- this is one of the few movies that has me excited because Maleficent was amazing. It was such I a good movie. I should watch it. It's, I've never seen it. Angelina Jolie is Maleficent, and oh my gosh, she just knocked. And this one's got um, uh, uh, help me out, Kent Catwoman, Michelle, Michelle Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer. It's Michelle got Pfeiffer. Michelle Pfeiffer playing the queen. Um, mm. Mm. and they're directly opposed to each other. So it's going to be Angelina Jolie versus Michelle Pfeiffer. Interesting. That's that alone. That dynamic is going to be amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Zombie Land Double Tap. I'm personally excited about this movie. I'm not sure how much the the general audience is though. Hmm. It's probably gonna be one of those ten dollar movie. Ten dollar movie. Yeah. Someone building a slate will like this movie. Jojo Rabbit. Oh, Jojo Rabbit. Yeah. I don't know if anyone's gonna go see it, but like. Right. Never yes. heard of it. This is is Taika Waititi's take on Hitler. Basically, there, there's this this little kid in Germany whose imaginary friend is Hitler, and and it's already w- winning awards, which doesn't necessarily translate to like you know right. box office. Yeah, I, I think it's a unique story, and it's in Taika Waititi's wonderful. So I think it's going to be an awesome, awesome movie. I just yeah, I don't see it being a money maker though. Mm-hmm. Terminator. Dark Fate. Oh, sorry, sorry. Terminator. Dark Fate. <laughs> Dark Fate. Yeah. Uh, Every, everybody's going to buy a ticket to this one. Yeah. So it's probably, yeah, it's probably going to be popular in the draft. Doctor, Someone new is going to say, I'll be back. Dr. Sleep. Yes. Uh, mm. um, people, th- this is a very Stephen King sentimental crowd. Somebody will want this movie. Mm. Yeah. Because that's a that's isn't that the following on or following to the shining? Yeah, yes. and they're the the, what they're doing with it is incredible. Yeah, yeah, I, I forgot this was coming out this soon. Last Christmas coming out November 8th. I don't know, mm, nope. <laughs> playing with fire. Nope. How about the latest Charlie's Angels reboot? Oh, uh, I'm sorry, I blanked out. <laughs> Yeah, didn't, uh, uh, okay. Yep. <laughs> Ford v. Ferrari. I want to see think that movie. This is a must watch Netflix documentary for me. <laughs> I think, but yeah, it's not a like doc. See, it's a. Right. Yeah. If this is something that I want to see, but I don't. I mean, right. there's a lot of star power in the movie, but. I didn't I know, know that. Th- I didn't know this was going to get a theatrical, theatrical release until I saw it on this list. I thought it was oh, literally wow. going to be like a Netflix movie or uh, Apple TV Plus or whatever. I, I wish it was a Netflix movie. <laughs> I would have to buy it. Um, 21 Bridges. No um, input. Hmm. A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Oh. Coming out yeah. November 22nd. That's, uh, That's Thanksgiving people, weekend. People will go see that movie. I couldn't yeah. even get through the trailer without crying. This, <laughs> I'm. I, this is one that I want to watch as well. Like this is this makes number three on the list that I actually care about. Um, Frozen two, yeah, that's that's the big that's, competitor to Star Wars. Yeah, that's Every, all the money. Actually, that might go for a hundred dollars. Ooh. The question is not will Star Wars go for a hundred dollars, but will Frozen two? Hmm. And there's a full month between them, so yeah, yeah. Frozen that's... Two is actually probably financially the better bet. It's can't probably, believe I'm saying that. Yeah, it's, it's probably the more the 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 more of a guarantee of return. Yeah, because um, Star Wars gonna... is either going to be huge or it's going to be flat. It's, uh, and at this point <laughs> in the saga, it could be either way. 
It's get, do you mean movie quality or do you mean just in box office returns? Well, box office returns is in it's going to be either a $300 million movie or it's going to be a $1.3 billion movie. And it's probably oh. going to be a two movie slate, honestly. If it comes up early, it's a yeah. two movie slate. So it'll be yeah. Frozen plus one other plus The Conjuring or something, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, Knives Out. I'm excited for this movie. This movie will make $65 million. <laughs> so I think it's a good, solid, if you're putting together like the classic Coverville 5 movie slate. Mm. Um, yeah. Knives Out. Yeah. Knives Out. Sure. Yeah. Never heard of it. Uh, Queen and Slim. This, this one I've never heard of. This is like Thelma and Louise, but a couple and they're black. And let me tell you something. Like nobody else is going to see movies these days unless they're <laughs> the Avengers. So this will make 45, 50, 60 million dollars. How about Playmobil, the movie? What? Or is that Playmobil? Playmobil? Yeah, okay. I was yeah. like, Playmobil games, yeah. the movie? Like... So Lego capitalized. I don't think Playmobil has the... I don't think they have the power that Lego has. I... Is it for little bitty kitties? Probably. Don't I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. All right. How about Black Christmas? Is that a horror movie? Is it a horror movie or is it like... I don't know. Okay, this is yeah. important. <laughs> Either way, though, maybe $35 million. I don't know. <laughs> right. How about Jumanji, The Next Level? That that trailer looked so good. Have you seen that trailer? I have not, but my kids it, love I, Jumanji. They, the, they love both of them, so... It's hilarious. Yeah, this, will well. this will probably be like the comedy of the season. Yeah action comedy it's like one of the few franchises doing action comedy right now yeah right um can't you we've gone almost robot so if you want to do a little skadoodle skedaddle or whatever else uh oh yeah um okay yeah um i'll step out and come back how about uh bombshell don't know it nope nope uh, Cats, the movie. This is this oh. has received all the commotion. All the hate. All yeah. the hate. There we go. That's um, better. But yet, that being said, Cats has received all the hate. But if you asked me, I could sing Cats from start to finish <laughs> and tell you all my emotional stories about going to see Cats. And so, I, I mean, I know I shouldn't go see it, but I might. Mm. All right. Uh, I don't feel like musicals do real great in the box office. Unless they're great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's got to be phenomenal. Like Chicago. How yeah. About, or like uh, Moulin Rouge or something. How about Check Little Women? Start to finish. Little Women. <sighs> Just put mm. me on my misery. Yeah. Spies in Disguise. I am not familiar with that one. The Voyage of Dr. Doolittle. Who's, Who's in, in it? it? <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like true movie draft pros. All right. So, and and finally, Bad Boys for Life. <gasps> Bad Boys yeah, will do well. Yeah, that's going to do well. Yeah. Yeah. This, is, again, is another movie I'm, I'm, I care about seeing. So. All right. Um, and that wraps up our movie draft five minutes or 10 minutes or whatever it was. 75 minutes. It's time oh. to do this. Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, Kent's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kent's games. Play with him. Play with him. Play with him. All right, this game is called Norm! Norm! As you might guess, it is a Cheers quiz. Um, so the, the sitcom Cheers. Jenny, I think you may be familiar with this. The horrible truth is I've only watched one season plus four episodes, but yeah, go for it. Oh, wow. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So Jenny, uh, the, the host of, of let's talk about cheers. Yes. Okay. <laughs> he, so, he just wanted to make sure he had the right Jenny. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many Jenny's. Um, 
Okay, so we're going to start with you, Jenny. There's 10 questions. Uh, we're going to okay. alternate between the two of you, starting with you, Jenny. What position okay. did Sam Malone play for the Boston Red Sox? He was a pitcher. Very good. He was a relief pitcher for four years, I think. All right, Amos. No, no, no. You. Seriously, you asked for my question because that's probably the only one I'm going to get right. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at these. Like for a, a diehard Cheers fan, I think most of these are pretty easy. Uh, but for a casual uh, – actually, where would you put yourself, Amos? Casual, uh, haven't seen in 30 years – I'd say casual. I I probably watched. Uh, it's been, it was what ten seasons or six seasons, something like that. Eleven. Okay, yeah. I've probably watched uh, maybe a third of the episodes. Okay. All right. So you might do okay in this. All right. Uh, what was Coach's real name? No. <laughs> <laughs> Marty. <sighs> oh. <laughs> Ernie Pantuso. That was close. All right, Jenny, I know you're going to get this one correct. What's the name of the restaurant above Cheers? They just talked about it in this episode that we just watched, Melville's. <sighs> of course, Melville's, the famous seafood restaurant. Uh, Amos, what is the name of Norm's wife? The oft discussed and never seen. Yeah. He's always get, she's always calling him at the bar. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I want to say it's it starts with the S like Cheryl or Sandy or something stupid like that. Okay. Um very wah, wah. close. <gasps> Her name is Vera. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> All right, Jenny. What's the name of the lovable con man that regularly swindles <gasps> cheers regulars out of their money? Oh my god, it's Harry the Hat. This is unfair. <laughs> yes, played by the one and only Harry Anderson. Um, I yeah, I loved him in that role. It was oh, so good. So good. Uh, did, Night Court. Did yeah, I was gonna say, did that does that make Night Court a spinoff? No, it was like no. the first time you saw Harry Anderson just shine. Hmm. Yeah, well, you certainly didn't see him shine in Night Court. He, yeah, he well, played him. <laughs> no, but it was the first time, and it, it opened him up to leading roles. He was so good. He was so dynamic as Harry the Hat. Hmm. Yeah, he probably got his role in Night Court because of, of yeah, Cheers. Yeah, for sure. That's gotcha. For sure. Night Court is still my wake-up ringtone. Oh, really? Aww, yeah. They have a great theme song. Yep. They really do. Got that sax. Com- well, you got like a little bass line, the doo-doo-doo. Yep. And then uh, when the sax comes in, so it gives you like this little warning that is coming because you can hear the bass. It kind of starts to wake you up. But then once that sax hits, everyone in the room is awake. So you have like a five second delay. Yeah. All right, Amos. Who performed the show's theme song where everybody knows your name? <laughs> I'm sorry, Amos. This is hard. I wouldn't know this. Boston. <laughs> Gary Portnoy. A, l- a lot of people thought that it was Woody Harrelson's voice uh, to include me when I was a kid. I, I was like, oh, that's totally Woody singing that. Hmm. It's not. Do you want to know <laughs> a secret about the upcoming season of Let's Talk About Cheers? Y- uh, yes. Love. We have a parody version of that song written by Movie League Mike. <sighs> and I sing oh. it. Oh. That's wonderful. Yep. <laughs> Can't yep. wait. Yep, that's going to come out as soon as it's edited. <laughs> that is freaking awesome. Yep. Oh, my gosh. Oh, boy. Jenny, okay. your next question, I don't, since you're only a season and some change into the show, you probably won't get this one. What was Rebecca's nickname in college? I don't know. I'm not there yet. Uh, Amos, do you have any any guesses on what that might be for, for no credit? <laughs> uh, slumpy. Yeah, no, it's a uh, backseat Becky. Oh, more right, slut shaming uh, on Cheers. Right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Amos, what year did Cheers first air? Eighty-four. So close. Nineteen eighty-two. Oh. All right, Jenny. I'm actually curious to know if you 
uh, are going to get this one. Um, what actor was the character Frasier originally written for? Ooh. Oh. But the dude that played him was so perfect. I don't know. John Lithgow. Oh, I, could totally I actually see know that, that guy. I can totally I see know. that. I know. Wait, Jenny, you know John Lithgow and he hasn't been well, on my RME? dad. What is going my on? My dad here? knows John Lithgow. Oh, okay. So, right, and one fine. time I was at a movie screening and John Lithgow was there, and I was like, spent ten whole minutes be like, I go, I'm Larry Josephson's daughter, and like I didn't because I was dressed like a chump. Uh, what, one of the yeah. I, was, I was actually looking through the the website for your dad's um, um what, what, oh gosh what the, his radio organization yeah the uh, radio foundation yeah yes and there was a thing in there about. Um, celebrities reading the phone book. Yes. It's a, was a really good idea. It was his last sort of like creative idea before he kind of got really ill and was focused on his health, but it's really funny. It is uh, so good. John Lithgow is one of the celebrities reading yeah. the phone book and I love yeah. it. I, I would listen I wanna, to hours. Of that. I know I, it's a brilliant idea. My dad would have these brilliant ideas and if he'd been 10 years younger, it would have been on public radio. Mm. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. All right, Amos, your final question. What was Fraser and Lilith's son Frederick's first word? Sam. Oh, my God, you're so close. His first word, they were hoping it would be mama, or at least Lilith was hoping it would be mama. Mm -hmm. But no, they, were, they had the baby in cheers when a certain person walked in the door, and his first word was, Norm! Of course. <laughs> oh. That's awesome. I just want to say so, Matt would have smoked this quiz and it's a good thing he wasn't on it. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great. Uh Jenny, you you won this quiz with a score of three to zero. Yay. <sighs> All right. Uh Amos, what do we got next? Uh, now is the time in which we talk to Jenny about all the new shit happening at Infinite Game Productions and with Jenny in general. Oh, this is so nice. Um, what do you want to know? All the stuff. Uh, I, 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 I happen about to have an inside line that a uh, new season of Let's Talk About Cheers is actually in work. Yeah, and it's out. It came out today. Yeah. Uh, well, there you go. See, this well, is how, the, this is where I'm at. The interim episode came out today. Um, uh, I also then, happen to know that there are new episodes of Tell It Anyway in processing. And do you want to know why he knows? Uh, Kent, Kent, do you want to know why I know? Um, are are you producing it? Perhaps I'm I'm editing it. Mm hmm. So so as of right now, as of this moment. Look, look 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 at me if you're listening listen to the sound of my voice as of now you can blame me anthony lemos aka amos for the delays and tell it anyway <gasps> finally somebody else <laughs> <laughs> i know how to please a boss <laughs> yep that's right uh but yeah so this was part of the creativity thing which was like look it's really hard to run a company we we know um, and it's, uh, you really do have to spend a lot of your time really focused on your clients. And we have such wonderful clients, I have to say. So like I started this company, I actually started it in 2015 when I was working for Tom. And then I went into marketplace to sort of like level up skills wise. And then I, um, left marketplace cause I really sensed that there was a time that I was going to need more flexibility, um, to be going to the East coast to deal with my dad who is not, um, doing so well. And so I left marketplace and I became a freelance producer and, um, uh, I did most of my own editing for a whole year for a bunch of like, uh, women centric shows. And I really loved it. And then I started like realizing like, uh, I, I was going to be just locked in a chair forever and not able to go and do things or generate new work. I was just editing. So I branched out and I got me some help. Mm. Uh, and my first helper was a guy named Rich Straffolino and he, uh, otherwise known as Rich from lovely Cleveland. And, um, previous guest on the show, previous guest on the show. And he was fantastic and he helped out and he's very patient guy. Um, and he has helped out with some of my clients, um, who like 
he's just good with clients. Like he's really good with them. He's very and patient. Then, very, yeah. very patient. Um, oh, you know who's here again? <laughs> so funny. Lucy's here. Uh, hold on. One of my weirdly, one of my infinite gain colleagues is here again. Uh, uh, this, on, this is I'm what texting. happened last time you were on the show. You got uh, Lucy showed up in the middle of recording, yeah. and, and I got very interrupty because I was confused. <laughs> I'll wave, I'll wave at her, you guys. I'll wave at her just so you can see the infinite gain never stops working. <laughs> Hi, Lucy. Sorry. Okay. Oh boy. You're gonna, have, you're gonna be on the internet. Hold on. You guys, right now we're talking about Infinite Gain Productions and Infinite Gain Productions gear is walking in the door magically. You guys, look. Uh, Hi, how are you? This you're not is, recording Yes, thank you. No, I'm really recording an episode right now, but we're actually talking about the company, so it makes perfect sense. Okay. Thank it's, you very much. Yes, we'll talk. Okay. Bye. Um, you guys, that was so much fun. Um but that's Lucy Cop, and she is one of the people that helps out on the show. And she does this amazing. I'm going to plug her show since she just showed up on the podcast. She does a show about people getting out of prison called Life on the Outside that mm. you should go check out because it's really good. Mm. Um, and she's really good at it and really dedicated to it. And it is now playing. The podcast itself is playing inside the California penal system. It's like on oh, prison wow. radio. Just pretty big deal. That's anyway, awesome. so um, as you can see, Infinite Gain uh, Studios is a collection of people. Uh, I can't. I don't have the money to hire full time employees. Uh, although one of them who I'd like to hire is sitting right to my camera left. Um, and uh, so I try to do a thing where I just give people podcasts that they work on. And so uh, I've done that really successfully with Rich. Lucy is my sort of like L.A. recordist and she has like set podcasts, um, which gives me an opportunity to like not get stuck doing the same thing all the time, which I'm bad at, uh, but to go on and level up and do other things. And so um, I have some cool jobs that I really like. I was sitting in a conference room yesterday at a big company devising a podcast strategy and like writing on a whiteboard wall, like from start to finish, how you develop and plan and tape and do production workflow and publish and market a podcast, like all along this big wall and then all the really fun stuff that they could do after it. And I was like, I fucking love this. Like, I love this. Um, and you know, obviously both Anthony and I work on talking feds. Uh, and that is like a full time job. That's a full time job with two part time people fulfilling yeah. that full time job. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, our host, Harry Littman is a goddamn genius. Like he's so smart, he's so smart and his brain moves faster than almost anyone else's brain I've ever met. And, uh, you know, I'll have an inbox that's like, you know how you have 50, emails in Gmail, like 49 of them will be from Harry and one's from my mom. <laughs> so <laughs> when that happens, I call it inbox Harry. And and, um, and here's the thing about that is I will check my inbox and have 10 messages from Harry going, oh shit, that's a lot of mm -hmm. messages. And I'll go through them and I'll tell Jenny, okay, uh, caught up on the Harry emails. When do you want to talk? And then she'll call me and she'll tell me about the other 40 that she received. It's like, holy, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> Because somewhere along the process, he just forgets to courtesy copy me on the emails. And, and it just goes so out of hand. Yeah, it's, yeah, he's just so quick with all the ideas. And, and yeah. when he's on a tear, he's on a tear. It's insane. Yeah, but uh, he's really smart. And he's one thing that I love about working with people, um, and especially when it's the right kind of people, is there. there's a certain kind of person that just excels at big picture thinking, right? Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, let's go get... Uh, you know, uh, Lawrence tribe and he'll talk about the constitution with another constitutional scholar, Erwin Chemerinsky. And I'm like, I would never have thought of that. Oh yeah. Let's get a congressman too. Oh, okay. Yeah. That and it all happens. And yeah. now some of that is like, uh, these guys all went to Harvard. And so, pfft. but, uh, some of it is just like, yeah, they all work together in the government and, uh, they all worked really hard and you can see how hard they work and what all hours they work. 
And it's just like really a fascinating experience. And we've got some really good shows coming up uh, that we're going on the road to San Francisco and to uh, to Austin, Texas, in, all next week. Uh, so this is the last time I'm going to be sitting in front of this desk for a while. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's been a really interesting experience. And uh, my only hope is I'd like Anthony to really take over more of it <laughs> so that I can do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so, uh, so that was at the point at which like the 50th email or like the second year of like doing invoices and budgets and managing people and all this stuff that I was like, am I ever going to get back to my own podcasts and mm. ever? And so I just, I was like, well, so one thing that made me do it was Brian Ibbett, who is basically like my fairy godfather of podcasting, right? Like Brian Ibbett is quietly one of the actual greatest supporters of my career, such as it is Tom Merritt being numero uno for so many of us. Um, and, but Brian just like, like he's just, he just helps out. And so he asked me the season when Nicole Spagnolo couldn't do America's Next Top Podcaster. He asked me to be a judge. And I was like, this is great, but I feel terrible because I'm not currently putting out any of my own podcasts. I'm certainly producing a lot and I feel confident that I know exactly what to tell these contestants. But um, I kind of feel like I'm sitting there with Justin and Scott and feel a little fraudy. Uh, (laughs) So uh, uh, that has been lingering in my mind, especially since the Tell It Anyway that is coming out features Justin and Molly Wood. Mm. So I uh, that has got me thinking. And so, yeah, that's that's sort of like that's a mix of where the burst of podcast commitment came from. So, yeah. Anyway, also, we got it. I redid the Patreon. So uh, Patreon.com slash J-E-N-N-I-E-J. Very low levels. Uh, so yeah, and I switched it to monthly, so there's no more of this episode stuff. It's like if you like one show, you can give a dollar. If you like three shows, you can give ten dollars. Whatever. Like, and then I made a five hundred dollar level for kicks. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Uh, and we we didn't pimp our Patreon this time, and I, that's probably a good thing because I'd rather spend the time on Jenny's. If you want to support active production of shows and it's not even just the money like the money is nice but it shows that there are people that really cherish what you're doing and it's that unspoken appreciation that can really fire someone up and get them to push something out and try new areas and venture out and do new things uh the money like for me and Kent, the money helps us go to south by that's literally what it does it buys new equipment once in a while it replaces a broken whatever whatever but really what it's doing is helping us go to South by and justify to our significant others that it's not just money we're throwing away. Um, yep. But not only that, it's the patrons. The number of patrons we have is probably the most important aspect of it. Because not only can, can you turn that into, hey, we've got this many people, but it's also when you're not feeling like podcasting, you don't feel like jumping on here in Ritual Misery and, and doing whatever, whatever. You look at that that patron count and you're like, you know what? There are 41 people that actually cherish the shit I'm doing each month, I'm going to go ahead and do this because there's 40 whatever people counting on me to, to give them something to listen to and occupy their time and maybe make them laugh a little bit. So yep. cruise on over to uh, uh, patreon.com slash Jenny J, J-E-N-N-I-E-J, and uh, throw a buck. I mean, it's worth that. If you Hell give yeah. a fuck, throw a buck and make it happen. Not worth a dollar. <laughs> Hell yeah. Also, check out what Jenny's got going on at infinitegain.co and let's talk about cheers.com. Exactly. And I put up something super cool for all the patrons that stayed, even then I wasn't charging them money and they could have gone away. Uh, if you go to infinitegain.co, you can see a thing that says the infinite wall. And I actually made a graphical image of all of the current $1 uh, supporters with their names in different fonts. And if you go there, you'll actually see ritual misery in the corner. Cause ritual misery is one of my supporters, which is so nice. And it didn't show um, up, of course. There it is. Oh, well that's there okay. It there, it there it is. Um, but like, these are all the people and, uh, who have supported. And I was looking at like the donations and like, you know, 
these these people here have been here for since the beginning. Like, like they are the hard core. And I just think about that, and I'm like, oh, we're such dicks. <laughs> like, <laughs> tell with all the family problems and everything. Like, like uh, we gotta get back to this. So anyway, thank you to my patrons who stuck with me. Um, I didn't charge you anything for a long time, but that's about to change. (laughs) (laughs) That's fantastic. Uh, For Kent and for me, I can honestly say that we are very happy to support what you're doing and um, moving on with uh, the programs that you have because we enjoy them. Definitely, definitely. Well, I enjoy this show. And by the way, the whole reason that Jenny and I are kind of like working together now, the reason uh, we're, we're... we're working together on all these projects is because I originally reached out to her and asked her if she needed some help editing tell it anyway, because I was going through back episodes like I could remaster these a little bit better. And I never got a chance to do that because she started throwing work my way. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, if you're going to do that, let me get you this. <laughs> that led to an internship and that's now led to, a, 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 I guess it'd be a verbal contract, but whatever. Yeah. Um, it's like a, like an, a collective. I like yeah. to think of it as a collective where I throw work to people um, and you know, like hopefully more work to people as yeah. the work keeps coming. Uh, bad weave. Thank you very much for the subscription. Um, Kent, why don't you tell people where we're at with the new year's Eve stream of thumb? Because that's the thing that we do each year. And I will, I will just say, I will start it off. I'll, I guess I'll, I'll tell people about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go. <laughs> um, this last weekend I went to the Alaskan walk for, Basically, it's a it's a walk walk out of darkness is what they call it, but it's the tenth annual suicide awareness uh, walk here in Anchorage. And I went down there with the um, uh, Remedy yeah. Alpine folks, took some pictures, and you can see some of those on the Twitter. Um, while I was there, I reached, I, I talked to several people, and you know, we 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 try to do three things with the streamathon. One, provide a platform for people to jump into and experience new shows and new things and, and try new things. We had hot beverages on there doing the little, little iron on jewel, little decal things that, you know, that she does. And or I guess they're not decals. They're like little pins or whatever. Yeah, per- perlers, I think. Perlers. Yeah. Um, so she spent an hour doing that and it was awesome. Uh, we had, uh, Bonnie come on and she did a workout. We've had, um, we, we got, a. uh, uh, uh Christy Cates doing her first live music. And yeah, that's, that's, that's what I was going to say. Christy Cates first live music stream was on the streamathon. Have wow. a drink. First video podcast. Yeah. Was on the streamathon. So many firsts on the streamathon. Yep. Uh, we've built relationships with all these shows and these people. And it's been great. That's just one aspect of it. Another aspect is we raise money for a charity and in, in most, usually it's been, um, Extra Life, which helps with uh, uh, children's hospitals and things like that, which is something near and dear to the Rich Misery Heart. And we really enjoy doing that. We've done other charities and other other causes in the past, but we're going to stick with Extra Life because um, it's basically just the easiest. And we we're, we kind of like really like where the money goes. Um, the third thing is, and this is the one that's most important to me above all the others, is that we provide a place on New Year's Eve that no one has to spend New Year's Eve alone. And part of that is being supportive of the people in the chat room, having a live chat. It is a requirement if you're streaming during the streamathon that you are present in chat. Mm-hmm. That's like the, the one requirement we, we freaking have. You have to be present in chat because we don't want anyone to have to spend New Year's Eve alone. And oh yeah, Big Boys Jay's first uh first show is on the streamathon as well. See yep. all these things. Um yeah. to that end, we may I'm I'm in talks right now with two different organizations here in Anchorage, we may actually have some sponsorship opportunities for this year's streamathon. Excellent. So looking Great. forward to that. Um, we may actually have maybe, uh, I'm, I'm hoping for some donation matching is really what I'd like to get out of them. That would be well, awesome. Seeing as how Matt and I spend New Year's Eve watching Twilight Zone and we used to watch Anderson Cooper, but now that Kathy Lee or Kathy Griffin's on, we don't do it anymore. It's been banned. Uh, we can commit to some version of storytelling or comedy or something for New Year's, like if you'll if you'll have us. Yeah, that'd be absolutely. That would be so, amazing. Believe so, me, that's a cause we believe in a lot. New Year's Eve streamathon is just over three months from now, so it's coming up mm-hmm. pretty quick. 
yolo420.com slash 2019 streamathon is where you go to sign up if you want to be a streamer or if you want to help out in some other way with like graphics or uh, promotion or, or other, other, you know, whatever. Y- your creativity is your limit with the ways that you can help out with Streamathon. Uh, once again, that's yellow420.com slash 2019 Streamathon. Uh, we're really getting this, this planning stage ramped up. Um, I, I cannot wait to see who all is wanting to stream because I've throughout the year, I've had so many people say, hey, write me down for, for being on the streamathon this year. Mm. I'm like, Oh, Oh fuck. Yes. Let's do that. Yep. And then I write their name down and I don't, so I don't have a consolidated list until you sign up for, uh, for it at uh, yellow four twenty dot com slash 2019 streamathon. That's where I really keep the, uh, the roster. Yep. Uh, so get in and- there. If, if you've told me that you want to do it, um, I still need you to go there, uh, so that it's all in one place. And by the way, I've got a soft yes from Scott and Tom on doing a current oh. geek for the streamathon since it is during their normal time this year. So oh, okay. if, if we can if we if we can finagle that, that'd be amazing. Um, I need to reach out to Brian Ibbett to see if he would be willing to do it another coverville uh, like he did a couple yeah. years ago. Yep. So yep. Um we oh man, it's it could be the best streamathon ever. And again, we are raising money for Extra Life, which gives money to um, Children's Miracle Network uh, hospitals, providing yep. help for children who are terminally ill or just long-term ill uh, and their families and ha- allowing them to spend some uh, much-needed time together before before they either get better and move on with, uh, with their life or they pass and the rest of their family needs to move on with their life. So, um, And of course, again... No one should have to spend New Year's Eve alone. So Kent and I will guaranteed we will be in the chat room as much as our family life allows. Uh, often we show up on other people's shows just randomly because fuck it. Um, but yeah, so this is the official kickoff of the 2019 Streamathon, uh, or as I like to say, the 2020 Streamathon, since we're welcoming 2020. But you know, Kent wins this one because he created the link first. Uh, the 2019 Streamathon, and uh, we're, we're uh, it's it's that time of year, folks. Let's let's go out and do some good for some other people. Amen. Hell yeah. All right, Jenny. Uh, we have one last thing to do before we close you out of here. I know you were uh, you're you're thinking you might be out of here already, but we have one last thing, and this is a voicemail we received, um, because uh, a couple episodes ago, that published wise, a couple episodes ago. Kent and I did a, we did a little a, a shtick for our main topic, and it it just came off the cuff and it just happened. Kent actually found his improv uh, prowess uh, <laughs> and used all of it. I guarantee it's not going to happen for another five years. Um, <laughs> yeah. And we we did kind of a, a visual skit, if you will, uh, that, that played kind of poorly, intentionally poorly for the audio listeners. If you're on video, you kind of understood what was happening, but if you were not. It might have given you kind of a response like this. What you're actually doing. Uh, Is uh, that uh, what you're uh, actually uh, doing? That, that, that's, that's not how that's supposed to work. I'm really hoping that my <laughs> podcast player was fucking up left and right and totally cut the fuck out of uh, episode, what was it, two, no, not 220. Uh, um, the, the main topic, the one where you actually did game, your newest crop. I think that's two, two, two. Anyway, for some reason, like all of the main topic was cut to shreds. It made no sense whatsoever. Please tell me that was my 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 player and not your actually doing. Because if that was your actual doing, holy fuck, motherfucker, god damn you, piece of shit, fuck nut going to shove my foot right up your goddamn ass. Love you, man. Bye. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, squid. Oh. I thought I was I just, cussing too much. <laughs> I, I re-listened to, to that segment just the other day, and uh, I know exactly where he's coming from, because, yeah, I could see if you weren't in on the bit, that would be quite frustrating to sit through. <laughs> oh, man. No, it was it was a lot of fun to do. It's a lot of fun to hear the reactions of. So, um, yeah, thanks, Squid. Thanks for sending us the voicemail. 
All right, Jenny, where can people find more about you, the things you do, and all the things you're involved in? All right. So the simplest way is always on Twitter, J-E-N-N-I-E-J-23, uh, where musings, thoughts, links, stuff like that. If you want to go and see what Anthony and I have been up to, along with Rich and a couple of other really awesome people, uh, infinitegain.co. And, uh, whoa, what the hell? I'll plug that Patreon again. Patreon.com slash J-E-N-N-I-E-J. Yeah, right. Kent, how about you? Oh, yeah. Um, RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter, where pretty much everything, uh, where all of my things converge. Um, if, if you want to find me on Untapped, where I rated the beer uh, in the pre-show, I am Del Noche over there. So add me as a friend and check out my reviews. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. What about you, Amos? Uh, well, real quick, I want to give a shout out to Sassien, who's been doing some RMP family uh, Sims 4 play the last hmm. couple of weeks. And we have a whole family over there with, with random people pregnant. So you should probably go check that out. Uh, what, what, what channel is that, that Kent? Is it Sassien? S A S C I E N N E? That That's it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I win. I win the internet. I'm Amos <laughs> at Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E on uh, Twitter. And that's pretty much the only place you can really find me reliably. I've been on Facebook more lately, but I've been muting a whole shitload of people. So I guess that helps. I got to reinforce my bubble. Uh, you can follow the show on Twitter at Ritual Misery and join the conversation at Discord bit.ly slash RMP Discord. I do want to uh, uh, go back to something that I should have said earlier. Uh, next week's guest is the one and only Tay Allen. Oh, yes. Uh, if you thought this conversation was awkward, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so check us out. We are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on DiamondClub.tv and Twitch.tv slash Ritual Misery. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. And thank you, listeners and viewers. For Kent, for me, for you, and for Jenny, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. There it is. No, no, flip one, Jenny. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E